Good morning. <clears throat> okay. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Today we'll be looking at the safety uh, measures that is provided in the Factories Act of 1948. Uh, the safety, basically, this is we're still talking about Chapter Three. Uh, Section 21, because till 20, uh, we have seen this pertains to health, 10 to 20 pertains to health, uh, whereas 20 to 40 uh, talks about, uh, you know, safety. Uh, section 21 uh, basically pertains to fencing of machinery, that is how the machines that is in operation in the factories uh, should be fenced so that there is no danger to the life and health of the individuals. And therefore it says that every moving part of a prime mover and every flywheel connected to a prime mover, whether the prime mover or flywheel is in the engine house or not, the head care and tail care of every water wheel and water turbines, including lathe machines, any part of, of a stock bar which projects beyond the head stock of a lathe uh, is also to be protected. So basically what we are saying is that you know, these prime movers are uh, where we are trying to put uh, you know, uh, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, material on the pulley and it drags like uh, you have you would have seen uh, in uh, flour mills so a similar type of uh, things we're talking about the flying wheels on which these uh, yeah, material moves uh, and therefore it says that you have to have helmet you have to have you know protect these project uh, protection of all those machinery which is there. Uh, it also talks about position of such construction as to be safe to every person employed in the factory as they would be and every part of an electric generator, motor or rotary con uh, converter has to be fenced. Every part of a transmission machinery uh, has to be fenced. 
every dangerous part of any other machinery such shall be securely defensed uh, by safeguarding of substantial construction now this simply means that the provision is uh, that they have to uh, keep the health of individuals as prime those who are working in these factories where machines are in operation it further says that the uh, purpose of determine whether the part of machinery is in such position or is of such construction has to be safe as a aforesaid account shall not be taken to any page uh, so what we find is that this particular provision section 21 Uh, empowers the government to prescribe rules uh, for further precautions that they may these factories may have got to take which is located in a particular state a uh, section 22 uh, you know is talking about work on or near machinery in motion it is for those individuals uh, who are basically working on the machines which are mo- in motion so it says that uh, where in any factory uh, factory it becomes necessary to examine any part of machinery referred to in section 21 while the machinery is in motion or as a result of such examination to carry out in a case referred to in clause 1 of provision to sub section 1 of the section 21 lubrication or any other adjusting operation uh, in a case referred to in clause 2 of the provision of said shall you know mounting of or shipping of belts or lubrication or any other adjusting operation while the machinery is in motion is not permitted It says that machinery has to be completely you know put out of the you know electricity or it should be switched off properly and then it should be lubricated or the belt that is to be fitted should be adjusted or anything of the similar kind should be done if it is not there uh, then people are not allowed to do that just a minute please sorry so it basically prevents uh, you know anybody from lubricating these machines under section 21 and it also says that those machinery which operates should have foothold where necessary to secure as well as handholds uh, which are there and without prejudice to any other provision of the act relating to the fencing of machinery every set screw bolt and key on any revolving shaft spindle wheel or pinion and all is for home and other tooth or fabrication uh, gearing of motion which should the worker be otherwise be liable to come into contact shall be securely fenced to prevent such contact uh, with these individuals uh, it further says that no women or young person uh, should be allowed to lubricate uh, the machinery in motion because that is something which is being prohibited as per the act of 1948 uh section 23 uh, basically talks about employment of young person on dangerous machine now definition of young person is provided 
uh, in section uh, chapter 2 of this particular act uh, can anybody tell me who is called uh, a young person by the way because the definition is child uh, we definition is young person adolescent definition is young person and then leading to adult so which age group basically talks about this young person so i think 14 to 18 age age people but yeah, uh, children between 14 to 18 yeah that is correct so all those individuals who has not attained the, the age of maturity in terms of 18 years of age when they become adult but have passed the adolescent uh, stage that is the 13 years of age uh, is called a young person now this particular act says that no young person shall be required or allowed to work at any machine to which this section applies now this is all machinery uh, which are in motion uh, but there is a clause that it says because we know that the working hours for these people are prescribed in the act to be five and a half hours a day that means they are permitted to work in the factories young persons provided uh, because child labor is prohibited they are young persons they are not a child right uh, so what happens that these people must have received sufficient training uh, in work at the machine and when they are working on these machines supervisor of those individuals should be present when these people are working as far as this particular act is concerned uh, subsection one shall apply to such machines as may be prescribed by the state government so here it talks about the power of the state government as to which machine these young persons can be employed and which machine these young person cannot be employed uh, this employed and therefore they will they shall have to basically uh, you know function uh, with these notions now if you look at another section we find that Section 24 is basically those machinery where striking gear and devices of cutting of power is there. Now in every factory suitable striking gear or other efficient mechanical appliances shall be provided and maintained and used to move driving belts to and from fast and loose pulleys which form part of the transmission machinery such a gear or appliances shall be so constructed and placed and maintained as to prevent any belt from creeping back on the fast pulley. Now the driving belts when not in use shall not be allowed to rest on or ride upon shifting in motion that is there. And every factory suitable devices for cutting of power should be there that if there is any mishap that power can be disconnected at, at the easiest way, at, by the easiest way. Section 25 talks about self-acting machinery. This is automated machinery we are all talking about. No traversing, tra, uh, transfer, traversing part of the self-acting machine in any factory and no material carried thereon shall if the space over which is run in a space over which any person is liable to pass whether in the course of this employment or otherwise which is there now when basically uh, it prescribed as to what should be the limit it says that whether it is the course of this employment or otherwise be allowed to run on its outward or inward traverse within a distance of two for you know 45 centimeters from any fixed structure which is not part of the machine 
provided that the chief inspector may permit and for such you know, transversal. Trust, uh, we also talk about section 26, which is casing of new machinery uh, in all machinery driven by power and installed in any factory after commencement of the act of 1948. Every <coughs> set screw, bolt or key or any revolving shaft spindle wheel or twinion shall be so sunk, encased or otherwise effectively guarded as to prevent the injury. All spur worms and other tooth or friction gearing, which does not require frequent adjustment while in motion, shall be completely encased unless it is so situated as to be as safe as it would be if it were to completely encased. Now here, encasing, if you see the rail engine or rail bogies that is not working in any factory right so the bolts which are there or on any uh, you know vehicle the bolts uh, that is being put on the wheels it is not encased uh, some time back uh, there was an accident about two or three years back there was an accident at the Aligarh railway station where uh, somebody who went to see uh, you know his friend or see off see him off uh, was returning when the train already started uh, so the train was gone this person was passing and after about 10 minutes he was still at the railway station uh, goods train was to pass at a certain speed and immediately that man fell on the ground and died at the spot Nobody knew what happened. When he was examined, it was found that he got hit by a bolt which flew from the uh, you know, a train, that good train, and hit him on the temple, and he died immediately. So similar things when machines are operating uh, in the factories could happen if it is not being encased, all those bolts which may fly while in motion. So whoever sells or lets on hire or as agent of a seller or hire a cause of brokers to be sold or let the hire for use in the factory, any machinery driven by power, which does not comply with the provisions of subsection one or any other rules made under subsection three shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to three months or with fine, which may extend up to 500 rupees, uh, and that was prescribed. And the state government is you know, empowered to make rules in this connection as well. Uh, section 27 talks about provision of employment of women and children near cotton openers. I think uh, cotton openers, we all know uh, when during the early winter season, we go to uh, get our quilts made or in the factories uh, where these cotton, or cotton openers are in operation so that you know, thread could be taken out after opening the cottons and used in the factories, cotton textile mills for weaving of the clothes. Those yarns are made, being made of these cottons. Now it's the act says that under 27, uh, no women or child shall be employed in any part of a factory for pressing cotton in which a cotton opener is at work because lots of dust uh, comes out of the cotton openers and that gets into the nose of these individuals and to the lungs uh, you know when they are breathing uh, and it is dangerous for women and children it is dangerous for others as well but Male, uh, men folk are considered to be slightly more careful and they also can resist it provided that if the feed end of a cotton opener is in a room separated from the delivery end by a partition extending to the roof or to such height as the inspector may 
in any particular case specified in writing. The permission uh, is given uh, with the condition that the room where they are working is not having the you know feeding end or the uh, the you know delivery end of the open cot. Uh, we further find that under section 28, uh, we talk about hoists and lifts. A lift, we all know. A hoist, uh, some of you may think what it is. Basically, if you could look at the large buildings that is being constructed, uh, 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 to take material to larger heights uh, beside these buildings, these hoists are being installed so that material could be taken up or the workers could be taken up because uh, lifts are only fitted uh, in those uh, buildings which has already been constructed. So in every factory, every hoist and lift shall be of good mechanical construction, sound material and adequate strength, properly maintained and shall be thoroughly examined by the competent person at least once every period of six months. Uh, now every hoist, way and lifts uh, should we shall be sufficiently protected by an enclosure fitted with gates and the hoist or lifts and every such closure shall be so constructed as to prevent any person or thing from being trapped between any part of the hoist or lifts and any fixed structure or moving parts which are there. Uh, it should also specify the maximum workload, the working load of that particular hoist or lift, and it should be clearly lit, written. Hoist and lifts are uh, no load greater than uh, the one what is prescribed should be allowed. The cage of every hoist or lift uh, used for carrying person shall be fitted with a gate on each side from which the excess is afforded to and landing. Every gate referred to in a closure or shall be fitted with interlocking or other efficient device to secure that the gate cannot be opened except when the cage is at the landing and at the cage cannot be moved unless the gate is closed. So you might have seen that uh, there are some lifts uh, which are operating in the campus and remains ineffective. Every now and then it does not work. That is because of non-compliance of the act, because it is not, uh, you know, of good mechanical construction, and it gets gets struck if the power fails. Because every lift at that is of good good mechanical construction uh, should be such that if there is a power failure for some reason, uh, it can slide back to the lowest point automatically and the gates could also be opened after it has landed. Uh, uh, but majority of our lifts are not having such kind of thing, especially if you have uh, gone to the registrar's office, the central office of registrar's, where lift is fitted, uh, is of awful condition that we could notice and because of I don't know why such things has been done. Uh, the following additional requirements shall apply to hoists and lifts used for carrying persons and installed or constructed in a factory after commencement of the set. Where the cage is supported by rope or chain, uh, there shall be at least two ropes or chains separately connected with the cage and balance weight and each rope or chain with its attachment shall be capable of carrying the whole weight of the cage together with its maximum load. It also talks about efficient device shall be provided and maintained capable of supporting the cage together with the maximum load uh, in the event of breakage or ropes, chains or attachments. Any efficient automatic device shall be provided and maintained uh, to prevent the cage from overrunning that is there. And the chief inspector may permit the uh, continued use of hoist and lift installed in every factory 
before the commencement of this act, which does not fully comply with the provisions of the act uh, that it talks about. Uh, section 29, lifting uh, machines, chains, ropes, and lifting tacklers. Now, these lifting machines, machines basically are the cranes that we use uh, in the construction. It is also the cranes that we use in normal day uh, for you know, uh, in any factory that is there. So in any factory, the following provisions shall be complied with in respect of lifting machineries. All parts, including the working gear, uh, whether fixed or movable, or every lifting machine, uh, you know, matching every chain, rope, or lifting tackle shall uh, be of good construction and sound material and adequate strength and free from defects. That has to be checked. It should be properly maintained, thoroughly examined uh, from time to time by the person at least once in every period of 12 months or in such intervals as the chief inspector may prescribe as far as these machines are concerned. Low, no lifting machine and no chain ropes or lifting tackles shall except for the purpose of test be loaded beyond the safe working load that is being prescribed by the factory where it is, it is being manufactured. While any person is employed or working on or near the wheel track of the traveling crane in any place where he would be liable to be struck by the crane, effective measures shall be taken to ensure that the crane does not approach within three uh, under a section subsection three six meters of that place the state government may make rules regarding it so if the uh, cranes are in operation it says that nobody should uh, you know from the range they have to uh, if they have to pass uh, they have got to pass six meters uh, from the distance range of that crane machine uh, which is lifting uh, the parts and putting on another part in the place. For the purpose of this section, lifting machines or chains, ropes, or lifting tackle shall be deemed to have been thoroughly examined if the visual examination supplemented, if necessary, by other means that they use. Now, section 30 talks about revolving machinery. Um, so in every factory in which the process of grinding is carried out, there shall Will be permanently affixed to a placed near each machine in such a notice indicating the maximum safe working peripherals the speed of every grinding stone or abrasive wheel the speed of the shaft or a spindle upon which the wheel is mounted and the diameter of the pulley upon such shafts or spindles uh, basically uh, it talks about all parts as to what speed it is operating and how to keep the person safe uh, from these uh, machineries. Uh, section 31 pertains to pressure plants. Uh, in every factory, any plant or machinery or any part thereof is operated in a pressure above atmospheric pressure. Effective measures shall be taken to ensure that the safe working pressure of such plant or machinery or part is not exceeded. The state government may make rules uh, providing for such examination or testing of such plant or machinery. Uh, this is also uh, uh, pertaining to boilers which is being used. And we long back, about 40, 45 years back, we had an accident in the mechanical engineering where a boiler was operating and it busted uh, because it was being operated at the higher uh, you know, capacity than it was prescribed. Uh, and of course, few people uh, had to meet that accident. So in every factory, all floors, steps, steps under section 32, uh, the passages, the gateways shall be of sound construction and properly maintained and it further says that they shall be kept free from obstructions, substances like, of, you know, causes persons and where it is necessary to ensure safety steps, stair passages and gangways shall be provided with substantial handrails 
so that is handrails has to be there on the stairs uh, which are being there and that they have to be uh, you know of the prescribed width that is there now it further says that under section 33 pits sums and openings in floors uh, that is when the underground uh, operation is there so you look at the mines uh, basically uh, that is pit uh, which is which is there or we talk about these somewhere else uh, which operates their underground water drainage system is operating so these sums are uh, there and their openings are these always on the floors uh, at the ground level so in every factory fixed vessel sums tank pit or opening in the ground or in the floor which by reason of its depth situation construction or content is of uh, is or maybe a source of danger shall be either securely covered or securely fenced the state government may order in writing if they want to exempt any factory from these assumptions and they prescribe rules for uh, the the some safety a section 34 excessive weights uh, no person shall be employed in any factory to lift or carry or move any load so heavy as to likely to cause him injury that is prohibited uh, it further says that adult men adult women adolescent and children employed in the factories or in any class of description of factories or in any in carrying on any specified process Shall be for every uh, group uh, the load has to be prescribed. Section 35 talks about protection of eyes. So, in respect of any such manufacturing process carried out in any factory or may be prescribed being a process which involves a risk of injury to the eyes from the particles or from the fragments thrown off in the course of the process, a risk to the eyes. Uh, by reason of exposure to excessive lights uh, if you uh, see uh, the welding uh, is being done light from uh, so the state government may prescribe rules and it says that they must wear a protective uh, glasses or protective gears if uh, such uh, operations are there so provision is there in section 35 section 36 talks about pre Precaution against dangerous fumes, gases, etc., so that it does not leak. No person shall be required to be allowed to enter any chamber, tank, vat, pit, pipe, flue, or other a confined space in any factory in which the gas, fume, vapor, or dust is likely to be present in such an extent as to involve risk to the life of that particular individual. And no person shall be required to be allowed to enter any confined space as is referred to in the subsection one until all uh, practicable uh, measures have been taken to remove any gas fumes or vapor uh, from those vessels or corners section 36a is basically precaution regarding the use of portable electric lights in any factory no portable electric lights or any other electric appliances or voltage exceeding 24 volts shall be permitted for use inside any chamber, tank, vat, pit, pipe, flue, or other confined space unless adequate safety device are provided. And it, if the inflammable gas fumes or dust is likely to be present in such chamber, tank, vat, pit, pipe, flue, or other uh, confined space no lamp or light other than one of the flame roof construction shall be permitted to be used therein and therefore you might have seen that the uh, you know uh, there is a headlight concept uh, which operates uh, in this condition hello plasma Now, exclusion or effective enclosure of any possible source of ignition 
uh, where it in the factory plant or machinery used in the process such as is referred in subsection one is not so constructed as to withhold the possible pressure that is not permitted and i'm saying that uh, therefore you would have seen that in the mines there is a headlight uh, that is uh, being worn by the workers uh, to while they are passing and working where any part of the plant or machinery in factory contains any explosive or inflammable gas or vapor under pressure where then atmospheric pressure that part shall not be opened except in accordance with the provisions that is provided under the factories act of 1948 as section 38 uh, talks about precaution in case of fire uh, in every factory all practicable measures shall be taken to prevent outbreak of fire and it's spread both internally and externally and to provide the and maintain safe means of escape should be provided in every factory uh, the necessary equipment must be installed like fire extinguishers or dust buckets should be kept and those uh, the source of water uh, should be provided where and pipes should be there uh, from where you know, these fire stations can operate so effective measures shall be taken to ensure that in every factory all workers are familiar with the means of escape in case of fire and have been adequately trained in the routine to the following so that firefighting exercise is to be carried out the state government may make rules in respect of any factory or class of description of the factory remaining the measures to be adopted to give effect to the provisions of the subsection uh, we also talk about section 39 power of the uh, to re require specifications of defective parts or test of stability uh, if it appears to the inspector that any building or part of a building or any part of the waste machinery or plant is in factory it is such of condition that it may be dangerous to the human life or safety be, may uh, you know may serve the occupier or manager of the factory order in writing requiring him before a specified date to furnish such drawings specifications etc and if it is not being provided uh, they should be termed as dangerous and shall not be uh, in operation so you might have heard of uh, buildings collapsing and that is there or high-rise buildings not having adequate provisions for the escape like sometimes back uh, in delhi all high-rise buildings were banned uh, uh, because uh, it was not having adequate safety measures vis-a-vis -vis fire and therefore it was considered as dangerous and only on uh, after they complied with the rules uh, it further says that during the fire no lift should be used uh, they have got to have the escape passage uh, from those factories section 40 talks about safety of buildings and machinery if it appears to the inspector that the building or part of the building or any part of the waste machinery plant in factory is such condition that is dangerous to human life or safety may be may serve on occupier or manager a notice uh, factory in order writing specify the measures which is in their opinion should be adopted and requiring them to be carried out before a specified date uh, so what we find that under section 40a maintenance of building is also provided as to how this building has to be maintained so that the minimum damage is there and section 40b talks about safety officers has to be appointed uh, in every factory who uh, is well trained and that appointment is by notification in the official gazette by the government and section 41 uh, the power to make rules or supplement this chapter by the appropriate government is also being provided as far well as these provisions are concerned so that is as far as the safety uh, is concerned which is provided uh, in the factories act of 1948 i'll continue with other parts thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir
ठीक है अब क्लास एंड हो गई है लीव किया जा सकता है